Hello friends and fellow collectors. As always, thank you so much for spending some of your day with me for a new Diecast Emporium video. Today we're going to be doing an unboxing and review of the Diecast Masters Highline Series 1-50 to scale Caterpillar D10 Dozer. This is the next gen Dozer, the newest D10 offered. And the item number is 85711. Now the first thing that as a reviewer I like to point out is the D10 is the second largest Dozer that Cat has in their lineup currently. However, the box and the size of this model seems a bit small, uh, but upon doing some research, it, that's actually correct. The new D10 does appear to be uh, a little bit smaller from the D10 T2, its predecessor. So bear that in mind. I'll kind of show you what I mean further at the end of this video, because we'll have a couple other D10 models out, and you can kind of compare and contrast the size. Anyway, I digress. Let's get on with the program. As with any Diecast Masters Highline Series models, pick an end flap, cut the tape, and then pull the nylon bag, which protects the model and the model's tin. So let's do that now. Get it open. All right, here's our first look at the tin. You can see a nice, crisp, and clear rendering of the D10 on the side. Item number. These are adult collectibles. If you're watching us for the first time, please note that these are scale model replicas intended for the adult collector these are not children's toys so treat them with the respect they deserve here's the top of the tin dozer at work and more information on the back if you want to pause my video at this point check that out you can and yet another photo of the machine at work so as promised let's pop the top there's a Small pamphlet inside showing you all of the upcoming Diecast Masters products that are either here or will be here very, very shortly in 2024. Two holes in the black foam rubber. Stick your finger in the finger holes. Lift straight out. Here's the model inside. We do have an optional operator figure accessory if you want to put him in the cab. This piece protects the top of the cab during shipping and this black piece protects the blade during shipping after that we can lift the model straight up also there will be the first time that you get yours there will be some plastic protection around the tracks they're really easy to remove so just make sure when you're taking them off that you don't chip any paint and once you've done all of that the model is complete out of the tin and ready to be displayed welcome back everyone thanks for sticking with me First thing is first, if you want to put the operator figure in the cab, lift up on the T portion of the protection structure, lift up on the top portion of the cab, and then you can place the operator figure in. And same thing in reverse. This just pops on just like that, nice and smooth. And then you can go back and put the T bar on as well. That way you can have your operator figure in the cab if you want to display the machine working. Let's begin the detail and decal overview. We'll start on the left-hand side of the machine. Here you can see a large access stair railing and staircase. This does fold down just like that. Be a little careful with it. And conversely, as you saw, you can fold it out of the way. The metal link tracks look really good. I'm quite impressed with how they look, and I do like the fact that there's a roller here as well. Here's your blade. The hand railings here the black ones that you can barely see these ones are plastic these ones the large ones that's all metal you can see the fire suppression system the tanks as well your large single shank ripper actually the ripper assembly is one of the most impressive parts of this model in my opinion because of all the intricate detail with the hydraulic lines and such moving along to the right hand side we can again see the tracks and you can see various warning and tie down labels Another warning label right here. We do have an opening engine compartment here and one on the other side, the new D10 logo. And the access grab railings are also thin and plastic and to scale. They do a quite, quite a good job. Moving towards the business end or the front end of the bulldozer, you can see the large blade with the visibility perforations etched or cut through. Again, great look on the model. The top portion of the blade is plastic, but the yellow portion, the larger portion, uh, that is die-cast metal, as you would expect. Here's another Cat Modern Hex logo in white. That brings us back along to this side where we started, but I do want to show you the top of the machine. 
you can see the various different lights uh, air conditioner unit your twin air coolers or yeah your twin air cleaners rather your twin exhaust and the etched walkway all throughout the cab as well which is super good to see again unfortunately there's no opening doors to the cab but at least the top does pop off if you want to take the operator figure in or out of the machine okay those are the details next we'll check out the functionality all right let's begin the working features overview i showed you that the top of the cab lifts off you have two opening engine service panels i would highly encourage you to use a pointer tool and not do what i just did by grabbing it by the railing this one opens wide enough to see a detailed motor inside and some of the other mechanical components the other one also opens up to pretty much the same angle and that's what that one looks like inside close those back up I'll show you the ladder again, the access ladder. You will need to clip it out of here because it locks in. So just again, be careful when you're unclipping this and folding it down. Clip it back in. All right, the ripper works moderately well. This is as high as I can get mine to raise without forcing anything. You can see just how much pressure I'm applying trying to get this to come up anymore. So I'm not gonna force it. You can lower it down to here which is really good because that's below the tractor. And of course you do have a little bit of uh, angle on your ripper. So if you want to achieve an aggressive rip, you can do that. So very impressed with the ripper functionality and how they were able to engineer that quite successfully. Now the tracks, the tracks are a bit stiff, but they do seem to roll okay. Again, if you had a surface that had some sort of friction on it, they would roll a lot better than this. Um, but even on a kind of a smooth surface, they look like they want to start to bite and roll. All right, here's where this could have been improved. I don't know if this is just an issue on my particular model, but my lift cylinders are so, so stiff. When I was doing this earlier to prepare for the video, I was applying an unbelievable amount of pressure. You can see me almost straining here, and I can't get mine to raise any higher than that. So I'm not going to force it. Um, you can see there's still plenty of play left with those hydraulic cylinders. So maybe one day if I'm feeling adventurous and I am okay with breaking a $160 model, I may force that a bit more, but that is all it would go up to on mine. However, a positive aspect is that the blade tilt or angle forward is excellent. You can see that that also lifts the front portion of the tractor off the ground. So the, in my opinion, again, the only one I have to go off of is the one I have in my personal collection. So I don't know if this is an issue on all of the D10s or just mine, but certainly the cylinders for the blade, lifting the blade height, uh, in my opinion, could use a little bit of work. But in terms of the presentation of the model, it's excellent. The detail is, of course, another step up in the right direction. Hydraulic lines are excellent. Paint decaling is great. Uh, paint detailing, rather, is great. The decals are good. Uh, and the various opening features really add a lot to those looking to add a new D10 to their collection. We'll take our final break. When we come back, I'll have a couple other D10s out here, and we'll compare them side by side by side. Okay, so let's do some compare and contrast. This is the D10T, originally a Norscott model, one of the first models re-released under the DM name. This is the D10T2 by Diecast Masters. And this is the new D10, just so that you have some reference for those that may be new. As you can see, the lift height is actually pretty comparable with what I could achieve with the other D10s in my collection. So maybe that is as high as it was engineered to go. And maybe it's not a design um, defect on my particular sample. So these are all lifted as high as they can go. You can see the, the uh, range of motion there. So let's start with the D10T, the original. So here's my D10T, and we are comparing it to the new D10. So here's your side-by-side -side view. Here's your side-by-side -side view. You already saw your front view, but we'll zoom it in even more. Here's your front view, your right side view, and the rear view. Okay, let's bring in the D10 T2, which is always 
very fun to say. And we'll go the opposite direction. So here's the rear on shot, left shot, front shot, and then we'll end with the right shot. So that'll bring this video t to a close. I know it's a bit longer than my typical videos are, but I've been constantly getting questions with collectors as new editions of models come out. Please try to compare them, um, or would you please compare them to some of the other versions that you have in your collection. So I really hope that this part caters to those that wanted to see it. I hope it helps you out. Hope it uh, aids in making an informed decision whether or not you want to add the new D10 to your collection. Overall, I think it's a good model. Again, the detail's great. Uh, the paint finish is good. I would really like to have seen a little bit better functionality with the blade, but that's just me. Thank you all so much for watching. Until next time, take care, be well. I'll see you in the next review.